Hey guys, it's Sam. This is The Blind Life, where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. Today we're back with another Apple Vision Pro video, and this time we're taking a closer look at some of the other ways to control the Apple Vision Pro, specifically using the pointer alongside with Zoom Magnifier. In my previous video, my, my full comprehensive review of the Apple Vision Pro, I talked a lot about voiceover because Okay, I don't know where my phone is right now, but <laughs> on my iPhone, I am very, very heavily a voiceover user. I actually don't use the magnifier that often. So it just kind of wasn't on my radar. I jumped into this headset and thought, oh, I need to turn on voiceover. But I definitely want to give equal time to those that might be utilizing this a little bit differently than I do. Namely, using magnification and some other ways to control it other than eye tracking. And incidentally, speaking of my previous videos, I've done a complete walkthrough of the vision related accessibility, including showing you how to do the basic voiceover gestures. And then once again, my most recent video is a full 30 minute review of the Apple Vision Pro. If you like this kind of content, you find it helpful, please consider helping me out by subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications. I post new videos like this every single Saturday. I've set my goal to reach 100,000 subscribers this year and and with your help, I think I can maybe do it. <laughs> Got a long road ahead of me, but I'm confident, right? Positive thinking. So do me a favor, hit subscribe and help me with my journey. But let's jump into settings and we'll talk about setting up the pointer, using the pointer alongside with the zoom magnifier. Okay, I've got the pointer enabled. It's this semi-transparent circle that's just sitting in my center vision. And I currently have it set to head tracking. So wherever I point my head, that little circle follows. Something else to remember, you guys watching this at home, the video you're seeing here is moving around a lot. But when you're in the headset, this thing is rock solid. This window here is rock solid. It does not move at all. This makes it pretty easy to look around with this little pointer because like I said, this window does not move. Now, the cool thing is that this works really well with the zoom magnifier. So currently by default, I have it set up to where I double click and hold the left button and then I can use the digital crown to zoom in and zoom out. So click, click and hold and zoom in. And now, as I mentioned in my previous videos, it only magnifies this window. So the beach out here, well, because we are in an environment, the beach is magnified as well, but if, we had regular pass through on the surrounding area would not be magnified, but this makes it easy to kind of look around and I can look at the different things and wherever my little pointer goes, you can see the highlight follows indicating that I can click on that item and everything works like normal. I can pinch and move these, these lists up and down. Everything just works much more smoothly when you're using it this way. When voiceover is turned on, things are kind of clunky. It's not very fluid. When it's turned off and you can utilize it this way, you're really getting the full power of the Apple Vision Pro and experiencing it like everybody else does. Okay, so let's jump in and start customizing some of this. I'm really blind, so I'm gonna zoom in a lot. I just want to quickly point out one thing. When you do a screen recording inside the Apple Vision Pro, it actually displays the screen more zoomed in than you see it in real life. So I apologize because throughout most of this video, I am using the zoom magnifier. So I'm already zoomed in and then the screen recording zooms in a little bit more. So a lot of this is going to be very large, very in your face. <laughs> I apologize for that. So keep that in mind in real life, you have a much wider field of view than what you're seeing on the screen right now. Let's get back on to accessibility. Here we go. There's the zoom. I'm going to click on that and let's check out zoom. Oh, we got some storm rolling in. <laughs> so you do have the zoom controller. You can turn that on if you want the zoom region. I talked about that. You have lens or full screen. I'm utilizing full screen. So I'll demonstrate this just so you guys can see. This is the window zoom. 
Really quickly, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Extra Wallets. Guys, I can't tell you how much money I have spent over the years trying to find the perfect wallet. And it's not easy because I have very specific things that I require in a wallet. But I might have found the perfect wallet. This is the Parliament wallet from Exter. It has all of those requirements that I look for in a wallet. Number one is multiple color options. That is one of the biggest problems with wallets these days. Unless you go with a little kid's wallet, all of our options seem to be either brown or black leather. And when most of the furniture in my house is also brown or black, it makes it really difficult to find my wallet. The Parliament wallet comes in a wide variety of colors, several of which are high contrast. I personally chose the Onyx color because that works the best for me. And let's talk about quality. Extra wallets are made from sustainable Italian leather and space grade aluminum. So this is definitely a wallet that's going to last you quite a long time. We have lots of other really cool features, including enough space in this wallet for 12 cards plus cash. Not only that, but Extra is also well known for their pop-up credit card holder. This makes it incredibly easy to get the card that you need. You can pop it up, grab your card, slide it right back in. Super easy. No more fumbling around to try and find the card you need in some random pocket. Pop. There's your card right there at your fingertips. And speaking of your credit cards and protecting those, Extra Wallets have built-in RFID blocking to keep your information safe. Finally, one of my favorite features that I think is huge for us, Exter has a wallet tracking card. This card is solar powered. You charge it up in the sun for a couple hours and it's good for several months. It connects with an app on your smartphone and you'll be able to find your wallet anywhere in the world. Not only that, but through the app, you can press a button to sound an alarm on your card in case you can't find your wallet. So all of this is why I think the Extra Wallet is a great wallet for the VIP. Right now, Extra is having an anniversary sale. You can get 20% off of their wallets. But if you click the link in the video description and use my discount code, The Blind Life, you can get an extra 5% off of that anniversary sale. That's a total of 25% off. So click that link down below and use the discount code to start saving on your next Extra Wallet. A huge thank you again to Extra for sponsoring this video. Okay, to enable the pointer, we go into physical and motor. And we want to click on interaction. In here is the sound actions. I talked about this in the previous video, how really cool you can customize certain actions with sounds. Uh, there's a great video on YouTube of a gentleman who doesn't have arms. And he has set this up to where he's using the pointer like I am. And when he wants to tap on something, he does like a click with his tongue and a, he's got a bunch of other sounds set up. It's really, really pretty cool. All right, and here is pointer control. Click on that. And I have pointer control turned on and I have the control set to head. You can set it to eyes, head, wrist, or index finger. So set it to index finger and you choose which hand here. I'm gonna choose right hand and continue now as i point if i want to choose something it's a little tricky to do especially zoomed in but so you can point with your index finger here set it back to head okay so that is choosing the pointer and how you want to actually use the pointer now you can come in here and you can change the color Hey, Editing Sam again. I just wanted to clarify this little section here a little bit further. You have these options to adjust the color of the pointer. So your pointer is a large semi-transparent dot in the center of your vision and surrounding that dot is a ring of color. So this is the color that you can adjust. Lots of different color options, reds, greens, blues, yellows, all of that. And then at the bottom, you have a slider to adjust the size of your colored border. I left mine kind of small, but you can make it much larger and more prominent. You can adjust the size of the pointer and then how it functions with a trackpad. And then you can adjust the scrolling speed. So this is how to use the zoom magnifier with the pointer. And you can zoom on just about everything, anything you want to. Let's go on a safari. I was watching my video earlier. Yep, there it is. And so here is Safari. And just so you guys see that, uh, I'll come back to reality here. I'm sitting at my desk. Just so you guys can see how 
the zoom magnifier only magnifies the window. So you see my Blind Life banner up there is not magnified. Nothing over here is magnified. It's only the window here. But it can make a really large window here in front of you, which is pretty cool. Now we've got a full screen. I tried out all the super cool things that it can do. I went through all the different accessibility settings and I tested it in a bunch of different situations. So the question remains, is this a good device for the blind? Where I create content for and about the blind and visually impaired and for the last month or so. All right, there you go. Like I said, this is how to use zoom magnifier with the pointer to interact with these windows in a little bit better way. Now, this is not going to be ideal for someone who is profoundly visually impaired. Like this is not quite big enough for me to comfortably read any of this stuff. I would have to bump up the magnification a little bit more. And one thing to note, I don't know if it's coming through in the recording, but it shakes around a lot, especially if I'm talking. If I hold the Vision Pro with both hands and not and stop talking, it's a lot smoother. Uh, but for a lot of you guys out there who just have a little bit of vision impairment, this might be a good option. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful, giving you a little bit of a glimpse into some alternative ways to control the Apple Vision Pro with low vision. That's it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching Sam with the Blind Life. I will see you next time.